than silver and gold. Aye, 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 aye. No fame of church, no riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. Praise God. The, the fellowship uh, together of the saints. Hallelujah. Is there any sinner here this morning? No, you have asked for forgiveness already. That's how easy it is to step out of sin into your position, saints. Amen. Just ask for forgiveness. Acknowledge that you have done wrong. Because if you don't do that, Satan will pound on you and we, and we fill you with guilt. But you see, because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, it will convict the word of sin. And that's what it does. Once you step into sin, the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. You are, you're, you're not for that. So immediately you acknowledge the Holy Spirit and you acknowledge your position which means you have sin. So you step out of sin quickly because you know how to. You confess your sin. And our Lord is faithful to forgive. Amen. Amen. But some of us hide. We pretend. We do as if we have not done anything wrong. And that's how Satan sees the opportunity and put us in bondage. Amen. I'm continuing from last week. You know, it was just an introduction. I told you after, uh, you know, when I was finishing, I said it was just an introduction. So, why are you still bound? How many of us still remember that? Why are you still bound? So, we read Act 16, um, 25 to 28. And we read Galatians five verse one i don't want to read it again because i want to uh encourage you to go into uh to our youtube channel it's already there you don't have to watch the old service you can listen to the uh message alone on our youtube channel end time evangelical church just type it a YouTube channel, you was, I mean, on YouTube, you see it coming up. But no. what I know is that there is a message in there, and it's for somebody. But I can't go back there now to start reading all that we've done, but you can do yourself a favor. Just go back there, listen to it. You will be, you will be so blessed. So, Act 16 talks about um, Paul and Silas, remember? At midnight, great earthquake. And what happened? The foundation of the prison was shaking, and all their chains were loose, the gates were open. But remember, they still remain inside. And that's really profound. I could not get there last week because there is a message in there. Not that they, they, they remained in bondage, they were free, but in prison. So, which means that somebody can be in a difficult situation, a tight angle, but still free. You are not bound. You might be sick, but you are still free. That thing is not oppressing you. It's not suppressing you. Amen. Though it might look like an affliction, but it's not overpowering you. You are free. Many people allow things like this, situations that they go through, to put them in prison. So because of what you are going through now, you have to change who you are. You have to forget who you are. The power that you possess. I mean, they were singing and praising God. Amen. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaking. That means God came down into the prison. Oh, you didn't get that. When you go through, I am with you. 
through the water, through the fire, I am with you. Joseph was in prison, and the Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph was in slavery, and the, and the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Yes, many, I'm going there in a minute, many are the afflictions of the righteous, which means we will go through one thing or the other. Now, last week, I, th I believe I, I said to us uh, three uh, types of uh, bondages, and the first one, physical bondage, the second one, spiritual bondage, and the third one, emotional bondage. Now, all of these things can only put you in bondage if you allow them. Not that they do not happen. They do happen to all of us. But would you allow it to now put you in bondage? That's what you need to ask yourself. Yes, you are fired. You thought you had a job last night. This morning you are told, sorry, we, we don't need you anymore. You are fired. And you ask yourself, what did I do? Nothing. So, who are you going to blame? God? Nothing. You don't blame nothing. You look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and say, Lord, what is next? Is anybody hearing me? You can be in a situation and still be free. Because you are passing through. I'm talking to somebody. You are crossing over the Red Sea. You are passing through the wilderness. You are passing through Jordan. You are entering Jericho. And Jericho walls stand strong in front of you. The, the gate was securely shut. That's what the Bible says. That you can't penetrate. You can't go through. They are not going through. But you are still free. And you have to go through. And here, you realize that it's not by power, nor by my, but by my spirit. He that saw you through the Red Sea, through the wilderness, is still with you. And we see you through this next obstacle. Is anybody hearing me this morning? That obstacle that you are looking at, you know, in, in, in your front, that mountain is going to be leveled. Is anybody hearing me? It depends on how you see it. That's why we have to address our minds. It's the issue of mind. That's why I closed, remember? Last week? The mindset. What, what is your mind saying right now in this present situation? In this condition? In this circumstance, what is your mind saying? Is your mind saying it's over? Give up right now. It is it's not for you. It's for other people. Listen, as Christians, you have to suffer. Suffering is for believers. No, I'm trying to talk to somebody here. Amen. Oh, you know, since the time you gave your life to Christ, you see what's happening to you right now. This is the life of a believer. If you have given your life to Christ, if you are a Christian, this is what you must suffer. What is your mind saying? Is your mind saying that you are free and you are more than able because the Bible says you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, which means you have to do things. Hello? Not that somebody is going to do it for you. But with the power of the mighty God, you, you can do all things. So, which means the door is shut. Through the power of Jesus, I can do what? Open the door. So, the mountain is before me. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, to, to go and bring a bulldozer to remove it. But I'm going to climb over here because I have the strength. Or you want it to be leveled physically. Oh, well, okay. God can do that as well. But with the Israelites, it took them through the wilderness, the mountain. Even on the mountain, they got water. It's all signs and wonders. Amen. 
God wants us to go through whatever we are going through. If you are a child of God, I have to put if there, because if you are not and you are going through something, don't say God. Don't say God is it's allowing this to happen to me. No, no, no. If, but if you are his child, you belong to God, and you know you have confessed Christ, and you have relationship, whatever you are going through, God is very much aware, and he's, he's in there with you. He's going through it with you. He allows it. Why? Sometimes we want to know why, but we don't have why. We don't have answer to that why. We just have to wait on him, trust him that this shall also pass. He's done it before. Remember years ago when you were in deep trouble and you call upon him, he answered you. Same thing. This present one. Your God is more than able. Now unto him. Come on now. Sing with me. Now unto him. Come on now. Now unto him. You are not singing it out. Now unto him who is. To do what? Exceedingly. Uh huh. Above. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I serve a living God. Oh. I serve a living God. Every body know. Sing a uterine. Oh. Okay, stop, stop. Now you did it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Let's open our Bible to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12. Another prison experience. Praise God. Acts chapter 12, start reading from verse 5. This is the account of uh, Peter in prison. Amen. Amen. Peter was therefore kept in prison. Yeah. But constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Uh -huh. And when Herod was about to bring him out, mm -hmm. that night Peter was sleeping, bound with no chains between two. Is somebody soldiers. hearing this? Go on. Bound with two chains between two soldiers, mm -hmm. and the guards before the and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold. Now behold. An angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying... God is about to strike somebody now Amen. on the side. Amen. Because somebody has been sleeping. You've been sleeping. You've been sleeping. You've been sleeping. Remember, when Jesus was in the garden uh, and, uh, and he was praying and he told the disciple to watch that he's coming. He wants to go yonder to pray. When he came back, he found them doing what? And he did what? Woke them up. Can't you stay with me for this hour? Can't you bear with me? I'm going through. And you guys are sleeping. But in this case, yes, the angel came down, go on. Arise quickly. Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Hey, chai. Then the angel said to him, uh -huh. Gird yourself mm -hmm. and tie your sandals. Uh -huh. And tie on your sandals. And so he did. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, Put on your garments and follow me. Uh -huh. So he went out and followed him mm -hmm. and did not know what was done by the angel who was hmm. real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Mm -hmm. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Mm -hmm. And when Peter had come to himself, yes. he, said, he said, Now I know for certain uh -huh. that the Lord has sent his angel, and he has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Hallelujah. Now, the topic before us is why? Why are you still bound when you have this God on your side? The one that says, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me to do? I like to say it like that. To do? 
Amen. This is the God that lives inside of you. This is the God that you serve. The one that cares about you. Yes, for a reason or the other, Peter was put in prison. He was even put between the guards. Like, it's in cha- I mean, it's, it's in chains, right? He was in chains. And, and, and then it's, it was not enough. In chains, oh, come on now, hear me out, hear me out. Right? In chains, in prison, between the guards. Only Peter, with no sword at this time, at least, no sword in his hands. What were they afraid of? Purpose, assignments. They knew what could come out of, you know, of Peter. So it was chained, put in prison. But when God will make his move, like it's about to make his move in your life. Come on, somebody. It's about to make his move in your life. You think you are limited? You are not limited. You are unlimited company. Amen. Amen. God is about to make his move in your situation. That embarrassing situation, God is about to make his move over it. That tight corner, God is about to make his move in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. The mindset. If you say that you are free, then you are free. But if you don't know that you are free and you are free, you are not free. I'm speaking English. If you believe that you are free, then you are free. But I said something right there. If you don't know, you are free. And you are free. You are not free. Can you sing it back to me? No. Sing it back to me. When did I use belief? <laughs> Praise God. If you know that you are free, then you are free. But if you don't know that you are free, and you are free, you are not free. No? Let me break it down more. If you know that you are free, you are free. But if you do not know that you are free, but, now I put but there, but you are free, then you are not free, because you don't know that you are free. Did you get me now? Because you, you do not know that you are free. So, in your mind, you are thinking that you are not free. But you are actually free. Why are you still bound? Is it not because of ignorance? Is it not because we are not aware of our status? We are not aware of where we are standing. Not aware of who is in us and who we are in or whose we are in. Amen. It's because we we have lost our identity. We don't know who we are. The power that we possess. The glory that is on us. Amen. I don't know if you get it. Peter was arrested. Come on. Just a man. Peter was arrested put in prison, chained down, and then put guards, two guards, to guide him. That is because they are afraid of something. So, if you have nothing to be afraid of, Satan careless of you. Oh, come on, you didn't get that. If if there is nothing that you are doing, that you are just roaming the face of the earth, then Satan care less about you. Can I, can I quickly tell you this secret? It's a secret. Let me tell you. This country, United Kingdom, they have spies, or uh, intelligence everywhere, everywhere, every. You know, as you are coming through A two, look up, look up, look up. You are coming to Ken through A two. You will see. Cameras. Some are for speeding, some are not. Just recording who is going in and out of Kent. 
because you don't know. As soon as you drive into Medway, they know your car has arrived here. They know you have returned. They do not need to monitor the screen. It gives the record. Once your plate number is marked somewhere and you move from north to south, as soon as you reach south in the United Kingdom, they know you have moved from north to south. Not only plate number, facial recognition. You think they don't know that you are here. You lie. But can I tell you this? If you are one of those that, I mean, that's thinking that, I'm trying to choose my word right there. You know, that um, you think you are, not, um, you are hiding, okay? If you think that you are hiding, they know where you are. But can I also tell you that you are not a threat to them? They know, they know, they know, but you are not a threat. They, you, you know, they look at you and just say, that one is looking for what he's going to eat. Let one of those that they are looking for, I don't want to mention the word, let them move to the area. You will see how they will bounce. They will come at them like, I remember, remember when our house was broken uh, into a few years ago? Yes. Was broken into? The area, actually. Yeah. So, so was broken into, and they came in, they took some things and all that, and we called the police. When they came, they were shocked. They were, they were not, no, they were actually angry with themselves. Because it's not only our house, it was our area. And by the second day, they came back to say that we know what happened. What, uh, the people that did this were not from this area. They came last night. To the, they, were t they told us all this. Captured them already. But they were so angry that it happened at all. Where am I going about this? If you have nothing to offer... In the kingdom, Satan cares less about you. He leaves you to, to enjoy life. Because he knows that you're already captured. You are in it because you have nothing to do. You have no value. Nothing to offer. But once he sees that you have a value, oh God, oh God, once you have an agenda, you have a program, you have assignment, Satan is like, no, 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 this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. But, oops, come on now, where I stand is in Christ, in God. Amen. Where I stand is in Christ, in God. And that's why it's going to be impossible for enemy to capture me. Because we have to go through God to capture Jesus, and after... Uh, 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 overpowering Jesus, then you can then reach me. Somebody did not get that. Did you get that? Amara, did you get that? Praise the Lord. As children of God, we are free and no longer to be bound. That is the fact. You've been set free. Bondages. Hmm. When they come, it's come, I mean, they always come through sin. I said this last week. Now, and I, you know, I shared this as well with Pastor. Now, you will think that, no, not sin alone. How many of you are in that thought already? Bondages, I said, comes through sin. When sin is present in your life, he allows the enemy to put you in chains. Now, I am expecting you to disagree right here. You are not. Are you in agreement? Thank you, ma. Because you think that why you have not done anything, the enemy attacks you anyway. Right? Yes. But I use a the word there. You know, I told you, pay attention to words. I said attack. Now, what you are experiencing when enemy attacks you is not bondage. 
is affliction. Affliction. Enemy comes to attack you. That's not bondage. And the thing about that is that righteous being afflicted, but the Lord delivered them from it all. Amen. We, Satan is fighting us every day. We are not ignorant of this. But not that we are in bondage. That's what happened with Paul and Silas and that's what happened with Peter. They were attacked. Not in bondage. Sin did not lead them into prison. Somebody is here at all. Sin did not lead them into prison. Both situations, they were doing what they've been asked to do. The assignment of God. They were working for God and they were attacked by the haters. And they were put in prison. And what happened when it was time? Because they know something. Peter once was just uh, interesting because he was sleeping. Peter was sleeping. Paul and Silas were singing. Are you with me at all? Peter was actually resting from the hard day job, the work that he did that led him in there. He was like, oh, finally I got to rest today. Oh, somebody's not with me. Why are you not with me now? Huh? Peter was doing evangelism, was going about, was doing what he's been asked to do and was arrested and put in prison. And once he got into prison, he was like, wow, where is the bed? He didn't have to pay for the hotel. He didn't have to. It was, where is the bed? It was there. You make sure you watch, yeah? Because it was two guards. It was in chains. Oh, he didn't see that. He used it as a pillow. And he was resting. And in the night, when it was time for him to rise, the angel came, woke him up. Come with me. Come with me. His chains fell off as well. And he walked with the angel in the land of Lala. Because he was still sleeping. And he was still sleeping. And the angel said, come with me. I said, okay, well, so was I. So I was going with them, and, and, and they went through the post, the first post, the second post, and they came to that. You know, they 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 almost said, "Where where is time for him to continue his work?" Now, if you if we read on there, Peter refused to leave the land. They begged him. So you need to go. They're looking for you. Say why? Why should we go? Why? So they got to a place, and the angel said, "Well, you are you are now free to to continue." The walk. And then it just came to him that hold on. Come on. Then he was awake. Fully awake. So, and I didn't know that the Lord was with me. My God. Why are you still bound? My submission is this. We lack knowledge. I don't want to keep using the word ignorance because you guys, you don't like it when they use it, but if I say it politely, like we, and I put myself in as well, so if I say you lack ignorance now, you I mean, you lack knowledge now, you will be like, pastor is insulting us. But, but I, hear me, we lack knowledge. We do not get what we need to get, and because of that, because of that, I'm going to now skip a lot of stories, and we're going to read scripture, read scriptures, Read scripture so that you will not take my word for it. Amen. What we need to do after we have been freed is to walk with God. To walk with God. You need to start walking with God. If you don't do that, you will soon walk into another bondage. Am I talking to somebody? Remember we read Galatians 5 1 it says, Stand first. Galatians 5, verse 1. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke 
of bondage. That's why I said it's not, I mean, it's a, it, it can only be seen that will put you in bondage. It can only be seen. Because it said, do not be entangled. We will surely wrestle, you know, against, uh, you know, the spiritual and all of them. That is attack. That is when you are fighting war. But when you start to, to go into sin here, right there, because some of us are like uh, skaters, you know, those that skate, you know, do skateboard and all those things. You think you can dodge this, you dodge that, you go in this. No, you need to remain what? Steadfast. Amen. Stand firm in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. And he now says, they do. He didn't say, how we not? He said, do not be entangled. Do not submit again to the yoke of sin, the yoke of bondage. Now, that's why I submit to you that when you are in bondage, don't quickly start shooting at the enemy. Enemy has done this. Enemy has done this. No. Please, I'm begging, check yourself. Check yourself. After that, after you have checked yourself, through the word of God, of course, then, if it's an attack, you will see it clearly that enemy has done this. Even that as well. The Bible says, when men slept. Come on, am I talking to you? Now, the Bible says, when men slept, enemy came and so tears let's start reading the Bible praise God Hosea 4 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge okay I also will reject, I don't like that. I also will reject you from being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. I don't like it, but it's the Bible. You don't have to like it. Do you know that? Oh, you don't like, to, you don't have to like the truth. Touch somebody by your side. Ma'am, sirs. You don't have to like the truth. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. Praise God. So, lack of knowledge. So, I make a statement earlier because I said it's the mindset. It's your mindset. So, how do I now stay free? How do I stay free from bondage? You stay away from what then? I said it earlier. Come on. You stay away from. But how easy is that? To stay away from sin. Is it very easy? No, it's not. I submit to you, it's not. Because flesh, we want to do what flesh wants to do. And flesh is so strong that the only thing that can overpower the flesh is the spirit, not your soul. Well, somebody did not hear that. Not your imagination. Not your determination. But the spirit of God. Flesh and spirit wrestle together every time. But the, the person, the, the one that you yield to, that you allow to, to have you know, ground, we prevail. Which is always the spirit. If you are a child of God and filled and fill with the Holy Spirit. And the food of the Holy Spirit is the word of God. Hello. Yeah, the Holy Spirit uh, have a nice appetite. The Holy Spirit loves to eat. Actually, it can eat all day. The Holy Spirit eats all day. And his food is what? The word of God. Keep feeding. Keep feeding. Keep feeding. And you will see yourself getting stronger. Stronger. That the voice of the enemy start reducing. Reducing. Even if they want to talk, 
they will chuck on their words. Somebody in the will chuck on the wall. And I don't want to say to you, <coughs> that's how it happens. Because you are so filled with the spirit. The atmosphere around you is so charged. Nothing can come there and sit around you and mess with you. Come on now, I'm full of, I'm full of the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Do you think I have time for somebody to come and gossip? Somebody to come and tell me that, uh, you know, that brother, I don't even know what's wrong with him. I don't have time for that, excuse me. I have things to do for the Lord. My agenda is full. I have plans. But if your door is open, which is your heart, for anything to come in to suggest to you, they will tell you that you are not a man anymore. Oh, somebody is not hearing that as well. You didn't hear that, right? If you allow your heart to be open to anything, anything which is a person, we come in to tell you, a man, that you are not a man anymore. Can't you see how you are feeling? Can't you see that you are not like you, other men? Somebody's not hearing this, though. Then you begin to say, yes, it's true. My voice is true. It's true. See the way I'm talking. It's true. And all of a sudden, you are waving somehow, which you don't used to. You begin to wave somehow. Your steps now start changing. A man with full chest, full beard. Now begin to walk, talk, because something is saying somewhere that you are not who you are. You can't allow that. I will not allow that. Ephesians uh, chapter 5. Is my reader ready? Ephesians 5. Because we want to start reading some scripture, I'm going to round it up with scriptures. So take your pen, write down, go back and, and listen again and again. Because this is how you stay free. Amen. That is, this is how you stay free. Your mind, your mind, your mind. You need to renew your mind. First Corinthians 2. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. Because you see, the pollution is so thick. It's so much. Pollution. Pollution is so thick. Once you step out there, pollution comes. Now, I'm not saying the pollution that is causing the uh, sun to come out when it should be raining. Or the sea to move back where it's supposed to. That we are being told by these scientists. Uh, which they are not God. I'm trying to talk to somebody. But they discover what God created. And they are explaining it to us. So that does make them God. But... Some of us were on the high street yesterday at Sitting Bourne, and we were, you know, doing evangelism. And uh, a woman said to me that, uh, you know, uh, the world uh, is by science. I said, how? I said, I don't get it. I said, they, they tell you everything. I said, I like that word. They tell you everything that they created. I said, no. I said, so how did they, how, how? Say, yeah, I get what you mean. I say, yes, you will always get what I mean. Because I know what I know. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Yes. Therefore, Therefore, be imitators of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Amen. An offering. No, stop. Is that one? Yeah, it's completed. Yes. One. Therefore, be what? What does that mean? Of what? Of who? So who is God? If you are going to be imitators of God, who is God? First, we have to know God. Then, then we imitate God. The first thing he did in Genesis 1 was what? Created heaven and earth. The heart was without and it was and the Spirit of God over her, and the Lord said, and there was. So I want to imitate that. 
Come on. You like that, right? Control my atmosphere. Control my circumstance. Control my environment. Control it. I'm not going to lose heart. Yes, they're going to be, you know, the heart was without form. But it's, it's around me. And I don't like it. So I have to change it. So I have to be like my creator. My God. Because we are created in ease. Amen. What God can do. I know you don't believe it. You don't believe it. You see your voices. You do not believe that you can do what God can do. Jesus said, uh, 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 the work I do, you. And now says what? Greater work ye shall do. But we don't believe, unfortunately. You see, if you don't know what you should know, you don't know. I like to use it like that. So that I'm going. Why do you speak to them in parables? They ask Jesus. Say, because they will never understand. But the one that wants to understand will look for me. The disciple went. Say, the parable of the soul. What do you mean? This is the the meaning of the parable. Amen. Step in your situation, of course, it's not a good one. You are not liking it. Especially waking up in the morning. Maybe you stay home late or you come back, you know, in the evening. Mostly because it, it's after that that you will come back to see mails. Letters. Now, you wake up in the morning, the news your phone call, everything was about to destroy your day. What do you do? Be imitator. Amen. Let there be. This is the the Lord has. I will in it. Amen. Command your day. Tell your day, whatever news, whatever story, whosoever, because sometimes it's not in form of letter. It's in form of people. Your boss at work. See me in my office. Calm down. It's a man like you. It's a man. Is everything all right? No, it's not all right. What is the problem? What's the matter? Let them explain. They say, is that oh, okay? Can I explain? And after your explanation, no, 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 no. We are not going to handle it like that. Okay. How do you want us to progress? I mean, proceed. Take your time. I learned this hard way. This small thing, um, yeah, hard way. But we have to read. So let's go to eight, verse eight. Let's start reading from verse eight. Be what? Imitators of God. God. Okay? Eight. For you were once darkness. You are once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Uh huh. Walk as children of light. Walk as. But you see, it's easier said in, at this point. If you are empty, if you don't know what light is all about, you will not know what we are talking about. But the thing is, it says that for you are once what? Darkness. But now. You are light in the Lord. Now walk as children of light. I'm a child of light. I'm light of the world. No, I hear you said Jesus is the light of the world. Yes. And he now say, ye are light of the world. The light of the world said, <laughs> let's break down the Bible. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of of the world. Amen. And the light of the world now said, ye are lights of the world. So Jesus made us, I mean, a, a light within, but God created us in his image. I love teaching. Sorry. Go on tonight. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Righteousness, mm -hmm. righteousness and truth. Uh-huh, go on. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Come on now, some people are not here. Are you here? If you are here, say, say amen. amen. Say amen. Okay, now, what we're talking about right now is um, staying free. You have been set free, and you are free indeed. But I believe if, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 5, is that Ephesians, right? So, so Ephesians 5 says that we should, uh, uh, um, it says what again, come on, let me go. Stand first, yes, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Amen. Amen. He sets you free. Now he's asking you to stand in it. And this is how to stand in it. Walk with God. Walk in the light. Walk with God. Verse 8 again. Uh, sorry. Go to 9 now. Let's start from 9. And go down. I'm not going to stop you because I want us to read about 3, 4 more. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, uh -huh. righteousness, uh -huh. and truth. Hmm. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Oh my God. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Amen. Let me see where you're stopping. 21. Go to 21. See then that you walk circumspectly, uh -huh. not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to, one, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Okay, because you, you were not following, because you were not following, so I'm going to do a very brief examination. Okay, so I'm going to call, call you, some of us, to tell me how you can stay free from what we just read. Yes, there are many things mentioned there. So I'm going to start. Should I start? You are so scared already. Look at your heart going bing, 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 because we're not listening. Listen, it's too much. Hallelujah. Amen. It says in verse 11. It says, and have no, have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather expose them. How many of us are doing that? So once you are not doing that, once you are not doing that, you are not standing firm and Satan can pound on you. Amen? Verse 12 says, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. It's serious. Amen? This is serious. Amen? Let's go to to 15, he says, see then, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now, all of this thing, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do them. Okay, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do them. But first thing first is, is for you to know that it's there and it's available to you and it's the way. That you need to walk in. Amen. Now, it says there that you should not walk as fools. If I have said that, some of you will be so angry with me. But that is written in the Bible. But he gave us a solution. But as wise. So how can I be wise? How can I become so wise? By walking with the wise one. Jesus himself. Be imitators of God. Walk in the light. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me throw some more so that we can go. I don't like to hold you. It's not my ways of holding you. I don't normally do that. Praise God. Matthew 7, 12. Matthew 7, 12 says, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Amen. Now, this is the one that um, when I have time, I'll come back for. Verse 13 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wild is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. How many of us want to walk with God? Narrow way. It's narrow way. Narrow. Very, very narrow. Uh -huh. Narrow path, narrow way gives no room for misstep. And you must have a balance. You must be able to balance yourself. I mean, foot after the other one. Keep walking like that. You can't walk like this. Come on, is anybody hearing me? Are you still here? You can't walk like this. You can't dance through the narrow way. It's so narrow that you have to keep your balance and your focus. And the only way you can do that is through the word of God. Verse 14 says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. We were at a church yesterday, like Pastor was sharing earlier, we were at a church and uh, they were doing an uh, anniversary, so we decided to, to surprise them. And when the man of God said, uh, how many years? 20 years? 21 years anniversary. And I look around. 21 years. Where are the people? Amen. And I, I thought of where? I thought of EEM straight away. And when the word came out, was so powerful and very quality. You I mean quality words, spiritual word, heart lifting words, words that can shape you to eternal life. That will not allow enemy to destroy your afterlife. Somebody is not hearing because all you care about is this one, this life. Broad is the way. Many are those that walk by it. But narrow is the way. Few are those who find it. Are you among the few? Am I among the few? Am I? Praise God. Words like this can only be found in the narrow way. If you want to go broad way, we know the broad way. But we don't want to walk the broad way. Because the Bible already tells us that it leads to what? Destruction. Eternal damnation. Hellfire. Lake fire. Burning with sulfur. Where you shall never die again. Prolonging suffering. I don't even know it's the right word, but it's like the suffering that we never hand. If you bang your nails with an armor, the armor bang your nails. You quickly go into the fridge, 
freezer, you get the ice, you put it on it. I tell you, after, after one hour, you will feel the relief. You will find, yes, you will still find relief, like uh, it's cooling off. At least it's cooling off. Yeah, you can still have a mark, you can still have the but it's cooling off. But I'm telling you, this hell fire, you, when you feel the, the pain, it does not, you know, go down. It, it, it's just constant. Forever. So that is the road you want to walk in? Are you all right? Let me finish by saying this. See this place, this edge, as eternity. It has no end. The most any of us can live, I don't think can go beyond 150. By the time you are 150 years old here or not, we will pack you home. We will we ask you to excuse us. Excuse us. You've done enough. Can you be going now? When mama is going, 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 110, 120, and then the rest will be so afraid. They will begin to advise mama that, you know, uh, your third son, your mama, are you all right? They are not asking you if you are all right. They are saying, Come and be going, Mama, please. At 150, at 150, this is eternity. And this is the age that you have lived. 150. Here on earth. You still have this to go. After life. And it's either hell or heaven. And somebody is saying that, how do we know there is heaven? Come, come. I don't know. Okay? But I know that I'm not going to hell, which I don't know as well. So, I want to at least go to the one that is saying that street of gold, no pain, no weeping, no sorrow, that is what Bible said about heaven. I haven't been to heaven. I was born here on earth, and I've been living here on earth. But I believe the Bible. Amen. So I'm not going to go and check for you whether hell is real. I'm not your messenger. No, I'm not, I'm not going to go and check, you know, to, to discover that, ah, hell is hell, 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 you people don't come to, no, 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 no. Because once, once, once you enter hell, there is no exit. It's, 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 it's got only entrance. There is no exit. Am I talking to somebody? I'm rounding up. When I open these eyes, I want to be with God, with Christ, in his kingdom. Oh, is he a lie? Somebody said to us yesterday, I shared with us on the ice tree, you know, I said to a woman, have you, have you said yes to Jesus? No, no, uh, actually, they are the, you know, I think, you don't get it. It's all right, no worries. Now, um, I said, have you given your life to Jesus? Have you said yes to Jesus? He looked at me, he said, in your imagination. I said, no, it's real. I said, hell is real, bro. And heaven is real. So I let it go like that. Because you can't start again, you can't start nothing. But what I'm saying is this. Narrow is that way. And this is what is called narrow. When you subject yourself under the teaching of of the gospel of the Lord, the good news. And you understand, and it's a very strict rules which human beings don't like. But narrow is the way you can't misstep 
And because you have understanding of what is beyond for the joy that said before him, he endured the cross. Because of that, he stayed on course. Amen. You and I can do the same. Amen. We have the spirit of God to help us out. Hallelujah. I'll let it go. Oh, I'll give you one more scripture. Praise God. Praise God. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. After this, you will rise up. Then we'll read one more scripture. And that's it. Praise God. Clap for yourself. You've been good students. You can do better. Narrow, narrow, narrow is the gate. And this is... Now, now if, I, if I happen to be your professor, which I am, in classroom, and you know I'm going to mark your script or whatever exam thing, you listen to me, you obey, you don't give me an evil eye, right? Because you know I have the pen to mark. Yeah. Are you there? Ephesians 4.17. Yes. Let's read quick. This I say, therefore. This I say, therefore. And testify in the Lord uh -huh. that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, who, being, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. Do you like that? Would you go back and read it? Slowly, to yourself? Let's stand to our feet. Wow. So much to say. So many things to say, but still, we're here. Ephesians 3, like I said, one more. So as we are standing, I want us to read it. Ephesians 3, verse um, 14 to 19. If it's on the screen, maybe we should all read it together. It's on the screen. So Ephesians chapter 3, starting from 14. Let's go. From who the old family in heaven and earth is named, that that he will grant you to be okay. Oh, hold on there. Let me read it so that some of us hear it well. Now, yeah, I would I would just read verse um, sixteen. I will start from there, verse sixteen. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man in the where 17 that christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able, it may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, Verse 20, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory 
in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Can I give an opportunity to somebody who wants to start walking with God? Just an opportunity. Maybe you'll be like, I've been so weak. Yes, I tried so many times to do these things, but I keep failing and I didn't, you know. And you want to just say, you know, now I'm making up my mind. Yes, I'm walking. I want to start walking with God. I want to start walking with God. If you are here, come. Come. Just come. If not, Pastor Roda, come. Pastor Roda, come. Amen. But if you are here, just come. I know you've heard the word, but you want a fresh start. A fresh start with God. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Will you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see you. Open my eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Would you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see you. I want to see give that moment again it was something that the Lord told me to do when I take the mic and I thank God that God spoke to pastor to do it you need strength you know what you ought to do in the place of walking with God on the narrow path but you have been struggling to do and you believe you need God's strength. Please come out. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Would you open the eyes of my heart? I want to see. 